Good afternoon, and uh, we are here today uh, at the Horasis Global India Business Meet 2012 in the afternoon lunch session. Uh, I have with me two gentlemen who have uh, today been honored with the Entrepreneur Year Award by Horasis, Mr. D.K. Jain of Luxa Group, Mr. K.P. Singh of DLF, and I have also with me Gunjan Sena, who is the chairperson of uh, Metric Stream United States. And uh, my first question to you, Mr. Jain, is first, thank you for spending a few moments with us. Uh, you got this entrepreneurship award, it's a big honor. Uh, what are your feelings at this point? What do you feel and what do you have to say very shortly? See, this is a great achievement. <clears throat> I'm very glad and very happy that my family has supported me to work hard on this because I started my career at a very young age and I've been through and through working very, very hard. And today I get an award in Horizons in Antwerp. It's a great pride and a great happiness to Well, sir, thank you very much, and you deserve every bit of it. A lot of young people are inspired when they hear the story and how you've taken it from you know, levels to levels. So uh, we'll, we'll get back to you on the next question soon. Mr. Singh, uh, your story has been more documented uh, from the uh, Jack Weld days of GE and how you could see 25 years before what happened, not five years, not 10 years, 25 to 30 years before what was about to happen, you saw it and you were part of it and you catalyzed it, stimulated it, a lot of people followed. So you've been given the award. Uh, what are your feelings and a few words of wisdom, if I can ask you? Uh, I consider this, thank you very much, uh, um, as a tribute to thousands of uh, my colleagues who worked with me, day, who worked with me day and night, to uh, architect, engineers, and various disciplines, business. And frankly, it's the teamwork which have enabled us to ride all uh, to ride all these odds in life which I have faced, and that's how I published my book autobiography recently and the title is whatever the odds I had a lot of odds everything you do you find a position in your life but the team which I had with me made me enabled me to overcome the odds and what I get today is thanks to them and actually I therefore is a dedication this award is to them as much as me but more the more is credit goes to them Thank you, Mr. Singh. I know you touched upon the teamwork because you have a fairly large team that is uh, spread over the country and I think uh, in every nook and corner. So it's not easy to manage a team and inspire and keep them going. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will look forward to your book. I'll try and take a look at that later. And uh, 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 Mr. Sinha, Metric Stream, uh, you know, this backdrop of this meeting, uh, last four years there's been growth stories there have been debacle stories in european union america india uh, there are outreach programs where indian companies go out and acquire companies globally uh, the common thing in all of this there is an element and that's the core of being an entrepreneur people say uh, how do you take risk and the entrepreneur says i don't take risk i manage risk so my question to you is in all of this, there is an element of risk. And uh, would you like to share some of your thoughts on the managing the risk in any scenario, whether it's or acquisitions or growth or, or slow down or? No, I think, you know, as uh, we were talking earlier today, we are living in a world where it's an unprecedented times at some level, right? A lot is broken if you look at the glass as half empty. But if you look at it the other way around, you know, the glass is half full, there's a lot to be optimistic about. And I fundamentally believe that there's never a better time as it is now for entrepreneurship to thrive where risk-taking and for people who know how to take risks. And a good example would be if you're trying to, for example, go beyond the traditional. As an Indian venture, we, we talked yesterday on this subject, you know, We've done a fine job serving large multinational companies and becoming parts of their supply chains and being part of their OEMs. But 
it's critical that we have examples like the Luxor case or the DLF case where we are actually creating independent brands, brands which can stand by themselves. Absolutely. Not being part of any global supply chain, but redefining business and global supply chains. And for that, you have to take risk, you have to manage risk, and you have to learn to thrive on risk. This is not just a, an art, it's also a science where you start to understand where you put weight, where you want to be defensive, where you want to be offensive. And part of that risk management is what has to be ingrained into the DNA of the organization. And companies who do, do that well learn to thrive, they make acquisitions, they grow inorganically, they grow organically and build value for the stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, in fact, there is a session in the afternoon which is called Brand India. But I have two iconic leaders here who've created Brand India. And I, I'm not sure whether you're speaking at that now, but you guys should be actually sharing your thought because you have built a Brand India, your India, which yeah, is completely... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that'll be... Well, I'll, I'll, I wouldn't be able to, I'd like to share... Uh, yeah, so please, Mr. Singh, would you like to uh, give yes, some uh, response to that uh, and thoughts? Uh, well, since I wouldn't be here in the afternoon, uh, you know, in my life, which I've covered in my book very extensively. I can only say what I did in my life, what I learned. I learned one thing in my life from people like Jack Welch and the great mentor I had, one Mr. George Hardy from another great man in America, was that any time you have an issue before you, business, whether acquisition, whether you're starting a new field, First, you've got to acquire deep knowledge about the subject. And out of that, find out what are the risk element. And I classify always risks in life into two categories, prudent risk, impulsive risk. The ability with which a businessman can segregate the two categories is first element of success. And I normally have only gone into prudent risk category. And that too thereafter what I've done in my life is that out of this prudent risk, then I draw up a plan of action, what I sh me and my team has to do as part of a structured program to ensure that I mitigate that, that risk factor, what he said, managing. So you have to manage that factor to see that the prudent risk which you have taken mm -hmm. is you are able to take care of as best as is humanly possible. Of course. If you do that, I've seen in my life, nine out of ten times, success follows. Yes. And of course, then you've got to have ability to fight. Never give up. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. That is interesting. Thank you, Mr. Singh. I think these are very... I've never heard this distilled more clearly than this about the risk part of the prudent part and the impulsive part. So I'm sure a lot of people will get very inspired with these two words. Uh, Mr. Jan, uh, what kept you going? It's been 50 years and you still have new things coming on. Uh, you're starting new things at this age. This is exemplary. So See, I'm a little different than KP Singh. Of course. I so. believe in impulsive risk, Okay. not the prudent risk. Because I have done my, in my life as a young, young entrepreneur, because I'm not MNC, I'm not a multinational company. I believe the large businesses in India by the entrepreneur should be done by the smallest possible way, so that you are closest to your employees, closest to your people, they believe in you and you believe in them. Attrition rate should be very lower, they should be trained and the team should be created. Then I believe in his, his feelings are from other person, my feelings are from Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs when started in this world, he, he came out to his uh, technology and innovation. I believe in technology and innovation. So once the innovation is completed and technology is done, then he feels and think himself and ask himself with his two, three, four people that what is this technology? Can we change the whole technology into a word technology? It's possible that the, all the consumers and whatever it is, they will be like iPhone, you know. He got bankrupt one day, you know. He came to India, spent time there. He went there, people thrown him out of the office. He said, no, I'm going to make this iPhone. So he tried that impulsive risk, but he managed the risk, and then he has seen the quantum of risk. I take impulsive risk, but see the quantum of risk. I, I have just moved into nanotechnology. I thought this is impulsive risk, but I thought up to 50 crores is my risk. 
because I can afford that under my other businesses. But beyond that, it would be difficult to manage. So I take the risk into it and then even go into the market as a first mover advantage so that I should not lose the track and other people will fall in. So my thinking is, is on this, this basis. I agree with KP Singh. His experience is far bigger than me, far better than me because uh, he's uh, at a stage that nobody can go against him or go against what he says. But for a younger entrepreneur, if you are going to see the prudent uh, risk, then you take the time. You go on studies, you go on thinking. By that time, three years are gone and technology moved on and the market is gone. Somebody else has come and that is the MNC. So it's a fight between the private entrepreneurship and the MNC entrepreneurship. There's a difference between it. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Mr. Jain. I think you have a point uh, because, you know, the, the type of industry you are in kind of determines the way you look at things. Uh, before we close this, uh, uh, Gunjan, would you like to say uh, from a technology paradigm or something of that yeah, sort? Let me give you my thoughts because, you know, I live in Silicon Valley, you know, mm -hmm. this hub and center of uh, entrepreneurship and risk taking. And uh, I, I fundamentally feel like, you know, as an entrepreneur, I've, you know, I've always made sure that I play in a sandbox which is large, you know. And then thereafter, it's not so much about trying to make something bigger. It's about looking at saying, okay, how do I take off each and every risk? It is there to realize the vision that I have. So whether you're talking about a prudent risk or whether you're talking about an impulsive risk or any form of risk, it's a systematic act of identifying and actually working through each and every one of them, however small or insignificant, and being persistent and persevering through a era, a decades, on that to me is a recipe for creating something nice and beautiful. And I think we have two great examples of nice and beautiful in both in DLF and Lexar as, as examples. I fundamentally believe most of entrepreneurship is about that. It's not about taking risk, it's about learning to manage and thrive risk in ways which are very, very different and special. Uh, Gunjan, I have one last question for you, and that is that uh, you have a footprint that also extends to India. You have a very big office back in Bangalore. So can you share with us the experiences uh, you, your company has with Indian enterprises in the uh, governance risk and compliance space as yeah. yet so far? No, so, you know, I. You know, as I said, I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years, and uh, really, I've played in what I call the the U.S.-India corridor, and that's my sandbox because I love both these great nations. And what you know, I was born in India, and now I live in Silicon Valley, so I love the energy in both the places. I have started a company called Whoware, which was literally was think of it as social networks 1.0, which was you know, sold for a fairly large transaction to a company called Lycos back in 1996-97. I created a company called eGain, uh, which I took public on NASDAQ, which was one of the fastest IPO in the history of NASDAQ, from conception to IPO in less than two and a half years. Uh, I'm still on the board of that. And literally, I was stuck in the tallest tower of in Tokyo on September 11th, 2001. And that is the day I realized that the risk in the world has changed because I ran down to the hotel and I said, give me the bottommost floor room there because I didn't know where the next attack is going to happen. And that was the genesis for metric stream saying, how do you learn to manage and deal with risk and turning risk into more of a science rather than a black magic or art, which most entrepreneurs or business leaders uh, have been thinking about. Okay, and, and uh, so, uh, and, and any recent uh, endeavors in India, are you helping some enterprises yeah. uh, on that platform? No, in fact, we have, we're working with a number of businesses in India, uh, small businesses as well as large businesses. We're working with regulators and so forth. So Indian market is just opening up to this whole concept of risk management and corporate governance. And I think as companies are now looking to build global brands, this is not becoming not just an afterthought, but a forethought so that you are leading the world in how corporate governance, risk management becomes a practice and as a science and as a platform on which you can create share, shareholder value on a sustainable basis. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, thank you gentlemen again. I know all of us have to go someplace or the other. Thank you once again and have safe travels. Thank you. Thank you.